we doing the Bruce Trail or the Smoky Hollow Side Trail? All of, it. all of it. So we're with Tom and Vince. Can you come, shy Angel? <laughs> Hello. You're gorgeous. I can hear the water. Yeah. We'll get to go swimming. <laughs> if you want to, I don't recommend it though. Might be a little cold. That's it. Oh, I love cold dips. Yeah, it's nice to come to these places when it's quiet. Yeah, here at Waterfront Trail. Bruce Trail, actually, with George Farmer. Hello. The man himself. I'm the man. Yeah, you're <laughs> Currently. Hi. Drinks and Scapes, my good man, Vince. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Here, hold this and watch me run down there like a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been coming here, Tom? I've been coming here, my first visit was about six years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and my last visit was two years ago when we just moved to Oakville. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful, thank you for bringing me. How, how far are we gonna walk, do you reckon, today? So we do have about two hours, so I think we're gonna go as far as we could for about an hour. An yeah, hour and then head back. And then head back. This is beautiful. And then we've got, I can just see a bigger waterfall over there. Check it out. Anyone else see an X-Wing fighter here? <laughs> Wreckage. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool here. Had a little shower in the, underneath the waterfall. But yeah, really grateful to be showing beautiful places like this. A bit more of a planted area here. It's a bit more chill because the movements of the water aren't so intense. Got these beautiful ex exposed roots. It's a nice, have a look. I could be wrong. I'm not, I'm not an orchid expert, but I'm it looks, it does look like an orchid flower. Yeah, I think so. Spot on. Yeah. Right on, man. It's beautiful. There you go, they're here as well. Yeah, there's different, I don't know, they're the same. I think it just shows we have, there's lots of little bees. I think it's an orchid, I might be embarrassing myself. I really love these exposed roots though. Angel's doing really well, isn't she? It's a crayfish. Yeah? Yeah. He's right there, that white one. Biotope. Sometimes I feel like I wish I lived in a rural area just to see more mm -hmm. of it. I think it's dead. I think it's a skeleton. Oh no. Oh, but it's a molt. It's dead. Dead. Dead ass. Uh... That's a shame. It is. But it shows that we have some. Yeah. They're a good indicator of water quality, aren't they? Because it's an inverter, but they're very sensitive to pesticides, excess right. nutrients. So that's either a, a bad sign, I'd say, because it's dead in the water. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but who knows? Anyway. Actually, further down, if you look, there's another one, unfortunately. Another look at one. the stone. Yeah, right there. Uh, oh, yeah. Dead as well. Okay. No. Sorry, guys. Sorry to bring you death on the channel. Yeah. That's <laughs> part of life. I'm George here. I am at Planted Aquaria, which is a beautiful little store here in Toronto, Canada. I'm going to show you around, show you some scapes, have a little chat. Can't wait to show you. Okay, here we are at Planted Aquaria. Welcome, George. We've got Please Vince, Tom, and Mai. Thank you for having me. I'm just going to show everyone around, and uh, if I need any questions answering, I'll just shout you. Is that okay? That's okay with us. This is the best scape here, by the way. The strawberry scape colander V2. There we go. And it is cool colander, isn't it? It's collapsible, it is, yeah. so it's perfect for traveling. Beautiful caladarium. Anyway, I just want to give an overall impression of the store. Beautiful little scapes as you walk in on the left. Loads of cool dry goods. Plant bay. And then we've got a scape here that I'll be uh, creating a workshop aquascape for the store and it's going to be for discus so an interesting interesting storytelling coming this way 
So, let's have a look uh, downstairs very quickly. Yeah, cool. So this is all of the livestock. I won't go through every fish tank, but just to say, very good selection, all healthy, very well maintained. I'm excited to use some of these Echinodorus for the workshop. Those are going to be great for the skin. Yeah, we've got some really good ones. So yeah, really healthy plants, really healthy fish, great selection, all aquascoping friendly, keeping the plants in humid, kind of dry, humid, hydroponic conditions. More fish and lots of betters. So that's the. We're not going to talk about fish so much on this video. We're going to talk about the aquascoping that's stuff. Right. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. Yeah. So let's check out these scapes. I want to start off with this beautiful paludarium. Hey Vince, are you going to come and chat about this yes, of course, tank? Sir. When did you set this up with Alex Bella? Is that right? Yes, with Alex. I want to say it's a few months old now. Like three to four months. Three to four months? Yeah, wow, already, my goodness, time flies. That looks beautiful. Yeah, it's a nice little paladorium. Paladarium. Paladarium, yes. I don't know, I'm French. I have an accent with everything I say. <laughs> yeah, because English isn't your first language. No, no. No, French is. Say um, something to the audience in French that's lovely. Uh, bonjour et bienvenue à Planted Aquaria. Lovely. And what did that mean? Welcome to Planted Aquaria. Very good, lovely. <laughs> so let's talk about this. It looks like the wood's been kind of glued together. Is there a couple of pieces there? Yes, yeah, so we put a few pieces together. Um, and funny enough, there is actually the seam of glue you can show. Um, and the reason why we actually had a fern on top. Um, but the beauty of it, it's, it's just to show that whenever you build an aquascape or hardscape, it's, you'll never have the perfect piece in nature. You right. have to build it sometimes. And it's just a matter of maybe four, five, six, whatever amount of pieces put it together, yeah. making it seem like one gigantic tree. Awesome, really cool. And do you know the plant species? Oh, I do not know all of them, unfortunately, but I do know that we did put a lot of Anubias and boost at the bottom because we wanted to have um we knew there was going to be a lot of shade and we wanted something that could naturally grow in the shade yeah um and then when we went on the top we had a lot of immersed growth that we had a few floaters as well uh -huh. and then that's why if we are to look at the top part there's like there's some potos um i know the name of that one right there that's a begonia the begonia yes we, funny enough, weren't sure how it was going to grow. Um, there was a lot of questions about if that was going to grow nicely or not, but the roots really settled in. And I actually thought it wasn't going to make it, man, but yeah. it's thriving the most here. It really is beautiful. I'm really sorry about this exposure. Okay. Funny enough, this wall in the back is DIY. That's really? what built by Frankie. Oh, wow. Yeah, so Frankie, the same gentleman that's built my uh, stands. It's actually all DIY, and that was the great thing about it. Now, I can't take any glory for that. It was all Frankie. Mm. Um, He's got much more of the skills than I do in that sense. That's great. The overall setup looks amazing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's beautiful. I, I love it here in the store. Yeah. It's the above and below water nature thing is really mm -hmm. quite special, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Let's have a look at the other bits and bobs. Yeah, Tom, you made that one, did you? I did, yeah. This is lovely. That's my single-sided island style. And I really love hygrophila. It's one of my favorite plants there. Yeah. Is that so, the 53B? That is the 53B. <laughs> it's also mixed with a little bit of corimbosa, I believe. Uh -huh. And you can tell the difference with the stems there. This one's more green and that one's the red, which is the 53B there. Oh, okay. That beautiful, got low energy, no CO2? Low energy, that's right. No yeah. CO2, just a filter smart 100 for the filtration. Yeah. Is that in the, down there? That's right. Yeah, it's just right there. Oh, cool. Oh, that little guy. Yeah, yeah. It's just night for this tank, isn't it? That's right. So this is your plant holding facility. That's right. Mixture of Tropica, mostly Tropica plants. It's actually all Tropica up oh, here. Yeah. Congratulations. For the most part. Well done. Nice. With the Flugel FX6. And then you got the Chihiros light, is it? That's right. We yeah. have two of the vivids hanging from the ceiling. Yeah. They're not really running full power too. I think they're only at 80 or 90%. Wow. It's quite an efficient way of using them actually. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've been playing around with the colors too, but I find white brings out all the plants colors better. Yeah, they're looking um, great I condition. I tried a little bit reddish, but that didn't work too well. And do you see a two injection on here as well? We do, yes. Inline diffuser. Yeah, okay, perfect. Oh, you have your one, two grows in here? Yeah, that's our fridge. 
Awesome. It's kind of like a wine rack. Yeah. So you can slide off the trays too. Very cool. All the fertilizers, all the gravels. Do you do soils as well? Yeah, soils just oh, around yeah. here, right there. That's cool. Such a lovely little store. Thank you. Now, how long have you been open? Uh, over a year now, maybe like a year and two months. Wow. So new then? Pretty new. We're a baby. This is beautiful. Who scraped this? I did, thank you. Very really nice. I want to go for that whole like uh, giant tree cave look. Yeah, it works really well. Thank you. How long, how, how long ago did you set this up? I set that up just before Vince and Alex did this cave, so roughly five to six months now. Mm -hmm. The first three months we were dealing with lots of algae just because the sunlight was hitting it too. Yeah. Um, but we were able to beat that off. Um, yeah, I think just frequent maintenance really is the key. That's it, yeah. Clean the filter, clean the tubing, clean your pipes. Yeah, water changes. Water changes, yeah. Yeah, so it used to be a bonsai scape tree yeah. or a bonsai scape uh, aquarium. Mm -hmm. But we used moss previously. And um, every time I did trimmings on the moss, it would dig into the Eleocaris and you would have moss growing out as the carpet instead. Okay. So took out the bonsai, added the two rocks, decided to go a little bit more simpler. And there's these two, a pair of, well not a pair, it's a male guppies. Yeah, they're both male panda guppies. And there are some red cherry shrimp in there as well. Awesome. I love both of these tanks. Thank you, I appreciate that. And then who set this one up? That one was also by Alex Scapes and just get, uh, the Aquascaping Rhino. Awesome. And they have their own YouTube channel. That's right. They have their own YouTube channel and Instagram. I think you can find them on YouTube at the Aquascaping Type. Yes. Okay, I've lost you. It's a beautiful. Yeah, the main centerpiece terrarium plant, I guess, or a love plant, is that asparagus fern right there. Yeah. That's the beauty of the scape right here. I'm very glad they chose that work as well. It looks great. Does, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Tom. It's been thank a pleasure. Come in here. I'm going to put the camera down and then we'll do an update yeah. once we've done the workshop. Awesome. awesome. Okay, so really simple aquascape, cosmetic sand foreground with a little pathway going down the middle, two mounds of soil left and right with Amazon swords, a variety of species, Anubius here in the midground, and then trident fern here and here. This isn't, you know, obviously a complex, you know, exercise in how to aquascape. This is very much a planted aquarium designed to house discus so that's why we've got the open sun foreground that light color can be with the com combined with the light background that's going to really enhance the colors of the fish they won't go dark like they used to in in my own aquarium the amazon saw is going to provide a perfect background grow to the surface probably may even even above the surface and then over the weeks and months the epiphytes the anubius and the trident fern are just going to gradually get bigger and bigger so the guys will have to do frequent large water changes, especially in the first few weeks to prevent algae. They'll probably add the discus in four or five weeks or so once everything's completely stabilized. And then it'll be a case of relentless big water changes, making sure those organic wastes don't build up and cause algae and water quality issues. So I think I'll end it there. Thanks, Tom. And oh, I my, my. Yes. sorry, my. <laughs> My memory is terrible. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for coming. We honestly uh, appreciate it. Are you on YouTube? Uh, we are, yes. I'll leave a link and Instagram, of course. Yes, that's right. And uh, Facebook. Yeah, that's yes. And you have a website, I guess. We do. I'll leave all the links. Awesome. We appreciate that. Appreciate you too. Take care. Take care. Cheerio, guys. Bye. Bye.